The state government has again been forced to defend its proposed stop and search legislation after similar laws in the UK were dumped. The British government suspended its stop and search laws following a ruling in the European Court of Human Rights which found the laws breached the rights of citizens to have their private lives respected. In the past, proponents of WA's stop and search laws have pointed to the British example. But today, the Premier was more interested in pointing out the differences. That is quite different than a general stop and search power for anyone, anytime, any place, as applied in the UK. The UK laws gave police the right to stop and search people within an area designated by the government. That area was Greater London, and a 28-day limit was simply renewed every 28 days for years. Officers didn't need grounds for suspicion, but had to be searching for articles related to terrorist activities. The European Court of Human Rights found the laws were too broad and didn't have enough protections for civil liberties. But the Premier says that's not the case in WA. What has been proposed in Western Australia are very limited uh, laws, uh, very limited stop and search powers that would only apply in designated areas at designated times and those times and areas would be known publicly. But that's not the only difference. The privacy of Australians is meant to be protected by the United Nations International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Australia is a signatory, but because the government hasn't passed domestic human rights laws, the stop and search powers can't be challenged at the United Nations. If this law goes through in Western Australia, there'll be no protections for any of us. Just this assurance from the Premier. I'm very careful and uh, the government is very careful that we will not in any way infringe uh, human rights, the rights and privileges of people in this state. A parliamentary committee examining the proposed legislation is due to hand down a report in October. James McHale, ABC News.